Tony, two uh, previous winners of this event, last year's champion, Paul Stocker. <laughs> Grant, I think, won it about four years ago, five years ago. 2008, there you go. <laughs> Referees for this event are myself and Cliff Hazelton from yeah. Matter Matter. <laughs> All right, uh, welcome everybody. Um, we've got the New Zealand Open Billiards final at the moment, and we've got uh, a guest here in the commentary box, uh, Pete. Hello, how are you? Peter Tankard from Australia, and um, we're watching Paul Stocker and Grant Hayward. Paul is from Hastings in New Zealand, and Grant is from Auckland. Um, we're hoping for a good match today and uh, it'll be quite a contrast in styles between uh, Paul who's renowned as a, a loser player or in off uh, player and uh, Grant Hayward who's uh, a developing top of the table player so we expect to see uh, Grant up at the top end of the table where the billiard spot or the black spot is in snooker um, and we expect to see Paul doing exactly what he's doing here and playing a series of long losers and keeping the balls broadly in the middle of the table. That was an error to lose the yellow object ball. So Paul's now limited to 45 further points, 15 hazards as they're called, pots or in-offs. He sat perfectly on the cross loser line from the billiard spot into the top pocket closest to the camera here. And the red ball should run up and down the middle spots. No. An uncharacteristic miss, but hasn't left a lot. It'll take a good creative shot to generate something from this leave. Grant's opted to play a safety shot, line the balls up make it difficult for Paul. So Grant has generated the error there from that safety shot. So now he can look at potting the red and then going in off the white to bring the white back out of the protection of Borg. I'll be trying to leave the white somewhere between the balk line, which is 29 inches from the bottom cushion, and the middle pockets for an in-off. Ball needs to slow down. like a cannon he's attempting here. And he's in his preferred position at the top of the table, the red ball coming back onto the spot. Cross loser with the running side to leave the red over the middle pocket. goes to 16 and he's sitting in perfect position for an in-off into the close pocket here. He's 
positioned it for a cannon to leave the red near the corner pocket and Pretty cannon well. onto the white. Pretty good. White's a bit tight on the cushion, but he can rescue this. He's a creative player. Characteristic miss. He's normally a strong potter. Difficult queuing for Paul off the rail here. You can only see the top of the cue ball. Each player has their own cue ball. Paul has the white and Grant has the yellow. Just never easy. Choice of shots here between a Nimoff and a pot red. Pot red sit up on the cross loser line and now push the red straight up the centre line of the table and put his white yellow ball into the far corner pocket. Choice of in-offs here between the white and the red. He's pushing the white down towards the red. To leave a cannon to gather the balls together on the top row. Pretty good. Pretty good. Cannon, just a nudge cannon, push the red towards the bag. Ball. Pot red come up high. Not quite high enough, but workable. In a quandary here. Cannon, pot red, pot red. Okay. Now he's in trouble. <laughs> Creative shot required. Hmm. Choices between playing a safety shot not to leave Paul much or to try and screw off the red and make the cannon. Cannon is where your cue ball hits the two other target balls. Oh, and flukes the red. <laughs> it happens. Welcome to billiards. In off the white now. Bring it in and out of balk. Back down the centre line of the table. It's drifted over onto the cushion, which is going to present him a problem. If it was on the middle line, he would have have, have had in offs or cannons. But now he's battling. Just sneaks in behind it and makes the cannon. Tough pot red, but where the white is, it leaves a natural cannon to follow. It's close to the spot. Very fine cannon here. Very tricky. One of the options is to play this as a, a white first cannon bounce up onto the red. 
like that. He doesn't like either of these. But white's going to yield him better position, although it's a harder shot. He's had him screwing off into the corner off this one and punch the white in and out of balk. Unlucky. Grant's taken an early lead, 52 to 13. But this is a genuine opportunity for Paul now. He's played to leave an angle to bring the yellow back into play. It's a tough shot, but it'll be rewarding if he gets it. Mm, just misses. And no naturals for Grant here either. Gonna have to manipulate them a little. Maybe white cushion red. Or stun. Looks like he's stunning across for the cannon. Yeah. They're just not coming nicely for either player at the moment. They're having to work hard for this. Stop. Oof. The white hasn't dropped, but it's almost lost, and there's nothing much he can do with it, so he's going to have to pot it in any case. So he pots it just to retain position on the red, but now he's limited. To a maximum number of shots from here. 15 hazards, and of course the first pot white counts as a hazard as well. So he'll be looking to run some points off the red pots and in Oz. And his last shot of the break will see him attempt to, if he doesn't miss in the invading period, will see him try and push the red into the safety of Bork. It's come up a little short, forcing him to play an in off into one of the top pockets on the right hand side as we look at it. He'll run the ball off three cushions and try and bring it back over the middle pocket. Oh, he's overcooked that. But he's in balk, so now he just plays a safety miss. It's not a foul, it's just a miss. And he'll leave Paul to try and solve the puzzle. Paul's not allowed to uh, shoot directly at the balls behind the balk line. He has to touch a cushion or a ball outside of balk before he comes back into balk. So he's sizing up a shot across the table with right hand side. Or he might just play a soft safety miss. No, he's playing the right hand side and doesn't make it. balls are not in great scoring position so Grant may elect to pop the white again and present exactly the same problem to Paul one more time. Oh no, he's tried to dig it out. I think he's failed to get the ball out of balk so now he has the puzzle to solve. Oh, must be out of balky sizing it up. So he's looking for a cannon off one cushion here. Just a little wide. Not an easy shot. Okay. 
thin end off the yellow. And gather the balls together in the centre of the table. Now this is very familiar territory for Paul Stocker. He, this is the strength of his game, is just moving the balls, playing in-offs into the middle and top pockets. And uh, moving the balls around, keeping them on the centre line where he can. Little screw cannon, push the red over the middle pocket. No, he's he's given them a, a solid hit to bring them around. to make the cannon push the red over the pocket but um, just played a little bit too much running side on that. In off the red here. left cannon position here which should bring the white onto the top rail but not behind the spot from where he is. He'll still be on the uh, far side of the table. White will end up on the far side of the table. So he's trying to hit the inside of the red, push it over the pocket. Looks like the path from the billiard spot into the opposite corner pocket is open so he'll probably play the soft hot red here to leave another one. Eight. Choice of shots here. He can follow through and leave the cross loser or stun pot. It's a little screw pot actually. Yeah. Push through a little and leave the off white neck shot. After two pots, the red goes back onto the middle spot. And this is standard in-off position. He's got the white into good in-off position, or what we call losers, the losing hazard it was called. Originally, the game of billiards was a choice between pots called winning hazards and in-offs called losing hazards. And billiards as we know it today is a combination of so-called winning and losing hazards, pots and in-offs. He's got them under good control now. Lots of choices. And good billiards is about keeping your options open. All the New Zealand players um, are very strong at the losing hazard game. Cannon here. Gather the balls together. That one's gone a bit wild, but it's, it's come up nicely. Could have It could have come up poorly. With an inch or two more of pace. Slippery little in off to leave another red in off. to get the white out back into the middle. Playing the 
red to get back into the center of the table. Whoa! Overcooked that one. Now if he wants to play a safety shot here, he pots yellow, pots white, sorry, and then just taps the red and leaves both balls in board, presenting the puzzle again to Paul. But decides that he can run a few shots before he has to do that. shot that hasn't quite worked out for him. He's made the score, he's got the cannon, but not good leaves. Anytime the red's on the uh, wall cushion, it's difficult. Looks like he's trying a stun cannon. Ooh, the pot goes. That's a bonus. He was attempting the cannon, but uh, we take all flukes and billiards. We're not very proud. And you don't have to nominate the shot, fortunately, for most of us. In off the white here. No, right, and leaves Paul down at the right. billiard spot end of the table, the top of the table as we call it. Pot red to sit on the cross loser line. Three. Hasn't quite come out far enough, so you have to play with check side, in this case right hand side. So watch the spin on the ball. See those dots <laughs> rotating around? And that side helps to pull it into the pocket. Now Paul's going to play in off the yellow into the middle and push it down towards the billiard spot on the far side of the table and leave a drop cannon. Fifteen. Hasn't come nicely for him. <laughs> Left with a pot red in the middle. All these pots are missable on full-size tables. Even for the most accomplished players. This is the first time the New Zealand Open has been a world ranking event. Thank you. So it's endorsed by World Billiards and has become part of the worldwide circuit of events, which includes tournaments in England, uh, India, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and uh, many of the Commonwealth countries, which is where. Uh, English billiards is the strongest. But English billiards is also being played in um, Myanmar, in Vietnam, uh, in Austria. There's a strong contingent of developing players in Austria. Pot red here will keep the balls gathered in the middle. Oh, that's just come a little nasty for Paul. He's a little bit too close to them. That's salvageable off the top cushion. He'll uh, 
either push through the yellow or play the cannon off the top cushion. If you can push through the yellow, that would be the preferred shot. It's tricky, but he's a good finesse player. Commentator's curse. <laughs> He's left Grant with uh, an in off the red. Made more difficult because he has to elevate his cue to pass the, uh, the white. It's thin. Delicate shot. Now it's spotting on. I thought he would have spotted on the other side and played the cannon. He must be looking at it off the cushion. Players will always look for the natural half ball angle. right hand side there'll be a lot of spin on this yellow ball Seven. a little bit betwixt and between here if the rabbit stopped earlier he had an easy enough now he's got a more difficult one good shot cannon to push the red over the top corner pocket. Grant's very comfortable putting off the billiard spot. Standing here to leave a cannon this time. There's a limit of two pots off the billiard spot. The limits came in because players were able to master the so called spot stroke. So there's a limit of two pots off the billiard spot without an intervening score. If the second pot is made off the billiard spot, the red ball goes on to what in snooker we'd call the blue spot, just to make life more difficult for the poor old billiards players. We can blame all that on W.J. Peel, who was an Englishman in the uh, 1800s who perfected the spot stroke to the point where he could do it repetitively ad infinitum. So for the rest of us, we suffered for that for the last couple of centuries. Lovely drifting in off to leave a uh, natural cannon position which will bring the white back out into the middle of the table and he'll be trying to cannon onto the outside of the red to leave it over the corner pocket. Ooh. Has he got a path through to the corner? If not it's going to be very tricky. I think if he had the path, he would have been playing it already, so it looks like uh, a smother here. I oh know he's sizing it up as if he's got it. 
yes. He went up to the other end of the table to check beforehand to get the right angle on the white. And now I'm playing this white, he'll leave it on the centre line of the table for another in off. Mm, running a bit. Cannon's the obvious shot. But white position is not going to be well controlled. This one's a bit of a lottery. It's come nicely for him because he grazed the red. Left a cannon here. He's not liking it. <laughs> Thinking about the in off white. Oh, that's worked out perfectly. In very close control here. Break goes to 46, which is in fact exactly equivalent with Paul's total score. So he's asserting himself early, Grant. He's been the form player of the tournament, having just earlier in the week won the warm-up event to the New Zealand Open, the Hamilton Open. And today he's had some very tough matches, squeaking past Jason Colebrook from Australia by two points only. Grant made a 38 break to level the scores and then left a double balk with seconds left on the clock forcing Jason to uh, make contact with the balls in balk and Jason went up and down the table missed the balls in balk gave away a penalty of two and the bell went giving the match to Grant it doesn't get any closer than that little fortunate there to contact the jaw on the way back he might have lost that white now he's got in off the white push the ball up and down the table on the same line and leave a drop cannon next no nope. he's gone across the table the other way this is a little dangerous because he pushes the white towards the pocket in making the cannon so he doesn't want the white to drop he wants to keep the ball on the table to maximize his scoring opportunities but it is a little tricky here. Uh, gone in off. goes to 69 now 71 still in good control here comes up high to drop down onto the balls to make a cannon and push the red towards the pocket again a little straight on this red so there's not a lot he can do with it he can either tap it in slowly and leave the cross loser as an in off or try and come around off two cushions for a pot 
It's the slow one. So let's hit in off the red into the top pocket. Push the red off the side cushion and have it sitting close to the middle pocket. Grant saw it differently. Uh, and that's why he's in the final and I'm not. But it hasn't worked out for him very well here. He's on 84. We'd love to see him make a century, but it's going to be tough from here. Screwing off. Oh, great shot. Great shot from there. in beautiful position, lovely break, under the circumstances of a final, an excellent break. Paul's been sitting in the chair for quite some time now, so it'll be quite a challenge for him to uh, get back up to the table and get the arm moving. A few long enoughs will help, get, help him get a feel for the queuing. to come up just a fraction more. He's got a cannon which ideally should be played with check side pushed over the opposite corner pocket but it's a tricky shot. Risks of a double kiss. Lovely pace control to leave an easy read. Stays on that line, so he's now allowed two more pots off the red spot if that's the way he elects to go. A little straightish on this yellow. I think he can come down and make the cannon. Secondary. Yes. Oh, we did not want that kiss. He had to read exactly where he wanted it. Beautiful touch. Beautiful touch. Just run on a bit far. And now he's got one of the standard shots of the game called the short jenny. It's a spinning in off into the middle pocket played in this case with right hand side or what we call check side and that makes it grab on the far cushion and snap into the pocket. Just missed it. Hasn't missed many all week. It might be the pressure of the finals that's getting to him a little. 201 to 66 to Haywood. Paul Stocker is the defending champion and is a legend in the game here in New Zealand. And like all the New Zealand players, he has beautiful touch and a lovely uh, losing hazard game. Just touched the close jaw and that killed the spin on the ball. Now there's a run through in off here, played with top spin and left hand side. No, there's not. There's a thin enough. <laughs> Pot red sit on the cross of this line. Perfect. Fine. 
takes the red in and out of walk. It's come down a bit too far. Nothing easy here. He doesn't want to pot white because that limits his scoring opportunities. But he may have to as it's the most obvious shot here. King. Sits well for the red. Now we'll try and maximise his points by staying near the billiard spot. A glitch. <coughs> Yellow's in the open, so it's the obvious scoring ball. And red's tucked in on the on the side rail there. So Paul will be trying to work the yellow near to the red. To get the red ball back into play. He's there, but it's not easy. In playing the cannon, he's pushing the white, pushing the yellow the wrong way. Are you back into walk? Red pot. Come down to the spot. No. In my defence, it is hard to judge the angles on this uh, from this camera position. But billiards is a notoriously difficult game to uh, commentate because there's so much creativity. Each player will see the shots a little differently and will generally play to their strengths. And Paul's strength is the in-off game. forced to pot white there, there weren't a lot of alternatives. And now he's only left with safety shot, push the red into balk and get the yellow wall up against the side rail. I'm uh, joined in commentary by Andy DeHaan, my friend and uh, uh, fellow Sydney cider. Uh, quite why we've got two Sydney ciders doing the commentary on the New Zealand Open, I don't know. But uh, uh, Andy, um, how have you seen the match so far? Well, it's very exciting. The only problem is that um, I think um, 
Paul has a lot of work to do to try and catch up and he really needs to make some big breaks. He's well capable of making the big breaks but uh, right now he's just struggling a little bit and Grant has got his, uh, his eye in so uh, I'm just hoping that um, Paul comes good and we get a very exciting uh, match today. They're just not running for Paul as yet he's so... Uh All week we've watched him uh, play delightful losers, uh, but that, that game requires a good knowledge of the speed of the table, and uh, he hasn't really had enough shots to get better down. He was playing on one of the quicker outside tables uh, before this match, and he seems to be just coming up a little short on everything, whereas Grant's uh, found the pace early. Got the red nicely into the middle of the table. What's he going to do, Andy? Well, on this particular shot, the idea is always to try and recover the white and push the white down the table somewhere behind the red spot. There's certainly an art to this, and it's a little bit, as I say to my friends, it's a puzzle. But um, if he can get a nice drop cannon here, he could be uh, nicely on the top of the table, and uh, he can score a few Whoa. big points. That didn't mean to happen. He wanted that right up there near the billiard spot. Safety shot here. Uh, he's played a clever shot there. He's played it safe. He's left the uh, opposition's ball on the on the rail, and this is a very difficult shot. Um, he'll probably Paul will just run up and just try and make it difficult for Grant for his next shot. With the time ticking away, it's uh, in Grant's favour to be playing the safety game once he gets his nose in front. And uh, I would have to say that uh, with our experiences here, the Kiwis are past masters at uh, taking the lead and then holding the lead with a series of uh, confounding safety shots. Well, the thing is, we don't see so much of this in Sydney. Um, very attacking players over in Australia. Um, and I think over here, they certainly know how to um, tie you up in knots when they Absolutely. want to. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I've been tied up all week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, no. it drops. <laughs> So now it's uh, Paul's chance to leave the puzzle for uh, Grant. Oh no, he attacks. That's Strange unusual. You there. don't normally Strange see that. You'd there. have thought he would yeah. have uh, left it behind the bulk line yeah. and made Grant f play forwards, but uh, I'm sure there's a method to his madness. Well, he's, he's invited the long cannon. He's effectively saying to, to Grant, make the shot, and if you don't make the shot, then I'm in again. In many ways, the single balk is a more attacking shot than the, than the double balk. Because it does force the player to play at a ball. Well, he tried a very difficult cannon off the, uh, the top rail there, and... Um Double kiss, always the danger on that shot. Paul's body language says that he's frustrated at the moment. <laughs> Dragging the arms. Long cannon. Makes it this oh, time. He's played that very nicely. And he is in a position where if he can pop this red. And stun, you think, for the... If he just if he just runs it in, through. he's got a nice drop cannon and get back up top of the table in two shots. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> he did not mean he, that. It was a second shot now. That's right. I didn't expect him in to do it this terms, way. It's all happening. <laughs> I know mm. it doesn't seem like much, but. Uh, <laughs> tries to gather the balls on the top rail. So now try and play in off the white. 
with a check side. Watch the spin on the yellow ball. Brought it up for the natural angle to regather the balls. He's going to try and just drop it dead weight onto the red and hopefully bring the white around to be close to it. He's come on the inside of the red, which is probably a clever shot and avoids the cover. Run through for red pot. He's been potting confidently all week, Andy. When I talked to Grant previously, he did say he came from a snooker background. Um, and so um, he does naturally pot the, the red very well. It is a contrast in styles, isn't it? You've got Paul, a uh, uh, traditional billiards player, playing the in-offs. Versus Grant, who's trying to incorporate more red pots and top of the table play into his game. Well that's a surprising miss because he's been seeing those very well but sometimes with putting in uh, that amount of side you can just slip off the tip a little bit uh, and miss that uh, that in off. So here we go we've got Paul uh, near the top if he can pot this he'll go in off the yellow and uh, he should give himself every chance. Grants 160 in front of this stage. And Paul has a lot of work to do to get back on level terms. And that hasn't worked out for him. Caught in the jaws. It's the nightmare, isn't it, of that shot? It we is the nightmare of that shot. You leave yourself into the jaws and, and still in and out behind the book line. Oh, this is a clever shot. Just doesn't make it. You know, earlier they were all dropping for him and all the cannons were being made and now just little tension in the arm. Doesn't take much. Well, he has a long way to go to try and catch up. He needs to dominate some table time and he's just not um, getting that uh, that edge that he had with in, in the rounds. Long screwing off. Great try. That shot had the benefit of getting the yellow ball back into Grant's hand and then he, he he could have potted the red and been in full control. It was a risky shot, but the payoff was good. Oh, loses it. Just not coming right for Paul. <sighs> Tap the red for safety. Run for the protection of Bulk. So what do you normally prefer to do here, Peter? You try and uh, play it safe or try and... I prefer um, to try and fluke one, Andy. <laughs> 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 that's just part of my game. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. right. It's a big part of my game. <laughs> the strategic fluke works for me. <laughs> yes, he hasn't Look at the spin on that yet. cue ball. Sp just spinning like a top in place. These uh, new spotted balls... Uh, uh, give us the advantage of knowing exactly what's on the player's mind. I think everybody who's played with them enjoys them. That was a very nice shot. Beautiful shot, wasn't um, it? Great he control. He can play a few reds here if he wants to gather some points, yeah. or he can uh, pot a couple of screw reds and he's always and, uh, got get that yellow yeah, out. He's got so the in, off good shot. in off the yellow any time he wants it. So just take a few points, three points at a time for potting the red. And knowing that the yellow is there as the saver anytime he needs it. And now's the time. <laughs> so red goes back onto the middle spot after it's potted twice off a billiard spot. And that leaves a, a very, very standard in off that all the players know. So He's playing the in off the red now into the top pocket and bringing the red round off three cushions to put it next to the yellow. But oh misses it. it. Wow. I would never he have expected I that. I wouldn't have expected that. He's such a good loser player. Standard shot. Even you and I get that one, Andy. 
<laughs> Occasionally. Uh, as soon as you you learn billiards, that's the first one of the first shots you're taught. Yeah, oh, well it's comes so up important. so much. Comes up so much because every time there's a foul, that's where the balls are respotted to. Is that the opponent's ball goes onto the middle spot? So players learn that one as uh, bread and butter. Now this now could be danger yes, now this because is, this is danger. This is uh, Grant at the ball. top, behind the red. So Grant, as long as he's above the line of the red, he can drop down on that white and make a cannon any time he wants and still control the red over the corner pockets. Oh, a bit close to his work there. Clever leaves the in off. I think he just roll it in to leave a cannon to get regather them at the top. Unfortunately, he lost that red and had to go away from the top again. We're always trying to just roll the the red knit towards the, s the pocket and just nudge a cannon on the white and just leave the white there and you can play that for a, a long time and score a lot of points. As soon yep. as it goes away though, you've got all the work to try and get that red back near a, a pocket and, and, and the white behind the spot again. So he's got to do a little bit of work to get back there. Should not have missed that one. Tough here, playing up the table. I'm on the cushion, you can only see the top of the ball. Just it's always a danger, isn't there, Peter, with just trying to roll it near a pocket if you miss mm. you leave your opponent an easy starter and uh, mm. it's obviously something you don't want to do lost it it's back in balk so it now presents a, a challenge for him he needs a pot red to rescue that uh, white at some stage and if now's the time he'll he'll take that and try and rescue the white eventually. It's a pot red that rescues the white by playing in off it. <coughs> that needs to stop. And does. So now he's got red into the middle pocket and come across close enough to the cushion to play the in off the white and get that ball back into play. But not yet. Well, in the semi-final, he had um, 11 pots and in-offs in a row right at the very end to win the game. So he knows what he's doing when he's just playing with the, the one ball. Mm. So, the Andy, you like to say that billiards is a puzzle, and, and I think that's right. And... The solution to this puzzle must in the end be a pot red. But how many points he scores before he solves that puzzle will be entirely up to Grant. The books do say that you should try and go after the, the lonely red as, uh, the white, sorry, as soon as as soon as you can, but uh, Grant's quite happy just collecting three points every time he does this. So yep. the scoreboard's ticking along quite nicely for him and he's being very patient. And more than that, he's dominating the table time, which keeps uh, Paul in his seat and gets him anxious and puts a little more tension in the arm. I certainly think that Grant's playing um, much nicer billiards and uh, he, he seems to have a, a lot more control at the moment. Yeah. Uh, things can change Look within five minutes, control. but um, at the moment he's certainly the, the player on form. His pace control has been very good to make that in off and bring the ball back each time to create another scoring opportunity. I think he really needs to try and rescue this white before yep. he gets to the point now where he, he loses so it. So now's the time that he's playing for it. 
And it looks like he's left a very yes, nice he's angle left there. Yes, he's left a good angle to have a thrash at the right and bring it back into play. He'll be trying to stop it between the ball line and the middle pockets to leave it into the white. Ooh, running a bit close to the side rail, so it's less than ideal here. Only you would attempt the short Jenny from here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do see those short Jennies <laughs> very well, those. but it's a touch, and it's at the table yeah, has to be. So, so uh, tell me how he's going to play this. Well, I think if he can play a short Jenny, he will, because uh, that will knock the white a little bit more into the middle of the table. But mm. um, maybe you can see the long Jenny. Oh, I know you're a master of the long Jenny, <laughs> Peter. Wish, you could probably play this. So Jenny is a spinning <coughs> shot into the pocket. Oh, oh dear. How did that stay out? Normally with the amount of spin you put in it, it really throws it into the pocket. But uh, just so that was that, a, that was a, a, a typical classic billiards break where he, he, he had to address a puzzle and, and he actually had the solution in hand there. Yeah. And then mucked it up on the <laughs> <laughs> on the, on the rescue <laughs> shot. And it, uh, it's amazing how often that happens that you finally work it into position. And then managed to muck it up from there. But in uh, in all fairness, it hasn't been too tragic because um, yep. now Paul's very limited to what he can do when he's only playing with two yep. two balls, and as he's um, restricted to fifteen of shots. these pots or in offs, hazards as we call them, um, he can the maximum he can score here is only forty five. That's about the worst position on the table where he's left that. It's just just. Uh, He's had better pace control on this all week. So he's opted for a safety, put his ball on the rail and hide the red in balk. And that's a nice shot. He's got <laughs> both balls nice in shot. horrible positions. Yep. Um, and all Grant can do really is either try and split them to make it a difficult shot or try and go around the angles to hit the red for a cannon. But uh. either way, it's a hard, hard shot. So he's elected to split them. But um, whenever you try and split them, you invariably leave something. Pot yellow. I think that's the only w sensible thing, and then put him into some more trouble. Yeah. So he's got to keep the balls apart here. He's got to push the red towards the bag, but keep them apart so that they're th the easy cannon isn't on from... Uh, around the angles or across the table. So Grant's opted for a, what we call a safety miss. It's not a foul because both the balls are in balk, but it is a miss and it's worth two points to the opponent. May have run on just a little and now he's got to play a long loser. Players would always prefer to play into the middle pockets. It's easier to see at shorter distance and they're very missable, the long losers. But uh, this is most uh, atypical for Paul, who's uh, uh, well known in New Zealand as a as a, an elegant in off or loser player. Clever shot to knock the white out, but uh, not an easy one to follow. Maybe a screw in off the red. Do you think? Well, it's he hasn't left it in a very. Um, amiable position. I mean, it's not just a question of trying to score off this. It's your following shot as well. So he hasn't left very much that's that's easy in either s either uh, areas. Um, now I think this maybe the screw call. cannon maybe is yeah, the um, option here. No, 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 no. Forcer in off. Yeah, well, that's and that has come out quite nicely. That has worked out okay. Now on this shot, if he can run the white go in off and run the white down the table behind the spot he'll then be able to get uh, oh get onto the red drop cannon. he's done exactly that and now he'll have a drop cannon and trying to get that top of the table back which is this is exactly the shot that Jason showed him earlier isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> don't hit it too hard <laughs> We were discussing the shot <laughs> just <laughs> earlier, <laughs> and, and uh, exactly yep, as it too hard. <laughs> Oops. So unfortunately, it's just ended up in a very awkward position for him, and that's the problem with the drop cannon. You ah. you play that cannon from in hand, but you're never really certain where they're going oh, to. That's very variable, isn't up. it? Even the great players get a variable result off the drop cannon. He 
if our friend Joe was here, he'd be playing the PK cannon. <laughs> With right hand side, watch the spin on the yellow. Yeah. Very nice. Clever shot. Very nice at control shot. Thin off the red, he's thinking about. No, clock red. Very comfortable potter. Oh, pick out. Yeah, I'm not sure about that shot. I mean, you're trying to move the white away from that rail so you can get behind it somehow and, and knock it up, but he may have an opportunity here, but he's not sure where the red's going to go. No. Yeah, he needs like quarter ball contact on the red. Yeah, so and that's the danger. The red just runs, runs loose a bit. Mm. But if he can just slip behind this white, or oh, I'll go in off the white side here, he may be able to recover this quite nicely. Dick run through. Yes, beautifully played. Beautifully played got the white behind the spot now. Now he needs to work the red into a potable position by playing one or more in-offs. This is a difficult shot. Yeah. He's going to have to put a lot of side on this to get behind the and hit the white from behind. Yeah, really have to drop on it. Really put some side and spin on it, and he's managed to do that. Um, and that's actually okay. That's actually bad. worked out okay. He's got a natural in off the white here. Get it back out into the middle of the table. Play a series of in offs. So now, if you can just knock this just up between the uh, the pyramid spot. Blue billiard spot and uh, the centre spot, he'll have a very easy drop cannon for top of the table. He's actually Come brought that a little short. bit too far in. in. He'll yeah. have to go See down and too try long again. Too short or too short in no yeah. man's land oh. there. So he's got the long in off the white or the, or the in off the red. I think by preference most of the players in New Zealand like the middle pockets. That's gone. Uh, that's so the trouble with that shot. You've, you've got yep. to play it a little softer so you ensure that you're just yep. below that um, centre pocket. Well. Uh, well he was forcing that a little bit and uh, it just hasn't worked out. Well, he, he really has been living poor very little to go on with as he's got a long pot here and yellow's out of commission that's a lovely shot but look at the result nowhere Three. or has he got the cross loser there it's hard to see on this angle looks like he does His problem is, of course, the, the yellow ball is out of play and he'll have to work out how to get that back in play. Okay, he needs this to jaw. I think he's happy just to score a few points and get his arm going again. Get the arm going. Look at the scoreboard, 319 to 124. And Paul is the defending champion. Oh, where's the balk line? Is he thinking about the cannon to rescue the yellow now? I think he'll have to go for the, the rescue. Yeah, that's a better camera angle. <laughs> didn't that's do much with it. <laughs> it's still in balk. <laughs> that's run quite quickly off the cushion mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, giving him a horrible position. Oh. And unfortunately, there's the result. If you can't make it easy, if, if you can't make billiards easy, mm. it's always a struggle. 
How hard do you think it is changing from the outside tables, which have had more wear on the cloth, to this table? Paul seems it's to be. It's very difficult. They're very. They're they're two different types of um, playing surfaces, and um, uh, you have to adapt your game. And I really don't think that um, Paul has really adapted. Um, he is an, an excellent player, and uh, there was great expectations. But Grant certainly adapted much better and uh, every time he gets an opportunity he's uh, yeah he's he's seized on it. Yeah. Oh well I, I think, think it's just careless and he's he needs to just settle down and concentrate a little bit harder. Wow. Um, we'd really like to see Paul come back and uh, and make a good game of this but he's he's really struggling at the moment. Oh, look, <laughs> that's but even that's that is a nasty, cover. It? It's a cover. He may have to go off the Cushion rail, first. hit the red, and then, then Cushion hit first the inside of the rear. red. Tap the white, tap the yellow. But uh, even that's not easy. No, oh, clear and he's miss. missed them. Clear he's miss. completely missed them. Now that's very. He seemed unusual. to rush that shot too. Yeah. He was down and sh played. I agree. Played I think he's still. feeling the pressure, which is very surprising. Um, these guys have been playing in many, many big now, matches. Now, uh, having had that foul there, it's the it's Grant's option now to play them from where they lie or to put them back on the spots, in which case his opponent ball goes on the middle. Now he's going to have a lash from here, screwing off. Well played. I'm a bit surprised at that. Uh, yeah, it's always a nice reset it. button, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a nice... <laughs> it's, a, it's standard shots. And yeah, that's right. You're back in familiar territory. I think most players would take the respot. Oh, oh and here we go again. So I, I really think he should have taken the respot. Well, it's have. a very short shot. I mean, he's at Can't risk go too wrong when you're seeing the balls. He's at risk of uh, the pot in off again here, isn't he? No, no, he's played it the inside way. Safer. Smarter. Well, he did this um, f 11 times uh, in the semi-finals. Yep. Exactly the same position with just the red on the table to win. So yep. he knows his way around uh, just putting and going in off the red. And he's certainly yep. taken advantage of it. And this has to be hurting Paul sitting there just watching this. It's about the only sport you can think of where... Uh, there, there are certain stages of the game where there's absolutely nothing that you can do but sit in your chair and, and wait your turn. Mm. It's um, and, and We often say this is such a cruel it? game <laughs> sometimes, oh. and, but when it's running for you, um, it's just such a joy. So Yes. <laughs> we just need more of it. Oh, oh, now that is surprising. He jumped up there. He, he did. Seemed to be he a jumped bit upset off. about something. But Snatched at it. Yeah. I think Paul just needs to run some of these middle pocket losers and get the pace of the table. He's quite capable of running the repeating mid, mid pocket losers. Oh, now the red's going in. That's a disaster. He really meant to leave that in the jaws. It's not a disaster, but it's it's not, not what he preferred. What the hell is he playing here? Oh, okay. Again, you know, it's just scratching away. He can't seem to yeah, get the balls in a nice position just to pretty. Put, put them where he wants them. And... Uh, that's what you've got to be able to do in billiards. Make it easy. Very simple little shots. He's all over the table, isn't he? One minute up this end, and next minute up that end. Well, the table's 12 foot. Um, if you can keep the balls within one foot, <laughs> yeah. it's much easier than <laughs> running down the table at 12 foot. So. Sure. Just a little wick on the on the red there. Come on, Paul, make it happen. Thank you. 
He's just under 200 behind, so he has to start scoring and Now's scoring heavily. I think he just needs to score score a few to get his confidence yep. just going, bang and he'll be bit. back bang at uh, back at his best. Yep. That would be one of the biggest pair of billiards glasses I've seen, and per perhaps Dennis Taylor's rival these, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're right up there. <laughs> Uh, now this is getting a little bit better. He's starting to move the balls a little bit more yeah. into the spaces he wants them. And he's playing down the table rather than back up into balk. He spent half his shots playing up towards the balk end. Is Paul a, a top of the table player predominantly or is he no, like the open loser, game? Loser player. Losing has a player. He likes the open game. Likes the open game. I'm not well quite sure why. Wouldn't, 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 wouldn't have thought so watching that. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, that was a very unusual shot. Just when he looked like he was getting, getting them back. Yep. Exactly 200 behind now. He's well capable of coming back. He is the defending champion. But uh, he's not making it easy for himself. That's a delightful little shot. He's in total control with the white over the pocket and the red just out of balk. Back out into the middle of the table to leave more in offs. I think what uh, all the Aussies that have come over here uh, this week has found that um, their uh, losing hazards, which are in offs, are just um, played so skillfully. Yep. Um, and they can do this players. time and time again, hour after hour, and uh, we find that um, we normally <laughs> trying to get top of the table as quick <laughs> as they can, but they're very, yeah. uh, very, very skillful at this. Aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> they are. And they're keeping you off the table. I mean, you run cold after a little while with uh, this much open play. Uh, that's come nasty for him. So this is just a little awkward, it's um <laughs> He's in no man's land here. I don't know just if a little too close to his work. He may have to invent a shot. Is that, that pot on? Oh he can pot get through. Pot and cannon. I think he's actually trying for the end po middle end pocket. Oh no. Oh good shot. He's it played was that on well. Pot and cannon that. No. Uh, a bit low. Or high, actually. That's the top end of the table. That was very close. We've had Sushrut Pandya from India here this week. What a character he is. <laughs> he's, he's a wonderful young man. <laughs> he's um, he has the most... He's an entertainer unusual attitude to the game he he plays unorthodox shots he his key bends, <laughs> his as, key he bends <laughs> as he hits the ball <laughs> and he, he's just been a, a and he keeps scoring and, and, scoring and, and scoring. yeah he, he's 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 just fantastic um, oh there's nothing's working for paul i mean that should have just come down the rail and sat over the corner now he's uh as a right hander it's very awkward for him now has to use the rest, not easy to screw with the rest. He's actually got to screw the ball backwards to make it go into the pocket. Well done. I have noticed on some of the tables that you've got to be a little careful with that particular shot. Um, the cushions and the pockets sometimes can throw here? them Is out a little a bit, so you have to be just a bit wary. Yeah. Thick he um, he set it thick. He now set it thick. His bread and butter shot. I know he'd never miss one. Oh, he doesn't miss one all week. Go and grab a coffee and sit down and uh, at the yep. break and come yep. back all guns fighting. He's just not firing at Is all. Is there a break in this? I believe that there's. Um, there should be. I think it's an hour and a half and then a, a break. Yeah. So 
here again, if he could get to that white and run it down behind the the spot, he would then. But he's looking at that now, so he's looking at that. I think the red's just in the way to <laughs> make yeah, that easy. Like so yeah, the red's on his on his half ball in offline. Yeah. So now he's going to play a thick run through to try and gather the balls for the so middle pockets. Oh, really? No, he must play the red. Okay, they're in good shape now. He's got control of middle pockets. So here's an opportunity for him to. So does he play this as a run through, or does he play it the thin way and with the uh, right hand side? Oh, so he's elected to go up and down. If he just slows down a little bit, he can get that in off again. Keeps it on the middle line of the table, which is always a safe place to be, unless it runs a little too far. But anywhere between the uh, balk line and the pyramid spot. It's sure to leave it in off. Now he's got a natural drop cannon position from here. This is That was a nice shot. That was and a nice he shot. Now he he should down. be right behind the spot. Puts, the, puts the white right behind yeah, the he's spot. Oh, oh. oh I see. That's <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I would have played <laughs> it, but uh, it's worked out okay. Maybe it was a little wider than we realised. Thinking about going all the way around the table here. So we must have had a balk line warning. I think uh, Grant had an 84 break, didn't he? Ah, oh, that he white's did. effectively lost now. It's in the jaws well of the Well, he has, he has no option. Um, you can't mess around. Yeah. You've just got to pot it and accept it. Get on with it. He would have wanted to keep it in the open, but uh, when it gets too close, you can't squeeze past it. Sometimes it's worth just looking. If it's hanging on an edge, you might be able to well, they, the, yeah, get they him so he can't see a ball and uh, he's what we call angled. Mm. They say that if the sum of the space around the ball is equal to one ball width, no matter whether that's on one side or on one side or on the other side or somewhere in between, that you can squeeze an in off in there somehow. But and these are big pockets. But that uh, that white was hanging right on the on the lips of the jaw, so Oh, double kiss. The dreaded double kiss. How often does that happen in your game, Peter? Uh, my game, pretty much every <laughs> shot. <laughs> but thanks for asking. <laughs> I think they're as annoying as w <laughs> yeah. when they when you hit one ball and it comes back and you're just about to get cannon and the opposition That's ball hits it out <laughs> of the way around yeah. the, yeah. the table. They call that a Maori cannon here. <laughs> I don't know why, but. <laughs> 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 When uh, <laughs> when you cross the point that the ball was when you aimed for it, but it's no longer there because it's been knocked out of the way. Very frustrating. Oh, he's just been left with another horrible all-round cannon. So the deficit in the scores doesn't seem to have changed very much, Peter. It's 190. Around oh no, 210, so 210. It's growing. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's getting worse. Well, it's getting away a little bit. Paul at the moment, and I just don't see how he's going to counteract this without no. scoring heavily. He, he has to get get uh, get some well score on the board, <laughs> some table time. And that is the great problem, I think, of uh, being predominantly a, a long loser player is that you're just not going to uh, rattle in those two and three hundred breaks that uh, the top professionals overseas seem to be able to do well certainly the, the the players that play top of the table can rattle off a hundred in six minutes six to eight minutes with yep. without really running around the table when you're a losing has a player so you have to wait for the ball to go in go up and down the table and 
be returned to you. Yeah. It takes a long, much longer time yeah. to, to get that 100. So, um, and it saps your energy too. Man. Has he got that out of ball? Yes, that's right. W when a good top of the table player is in the zone, he just it's yeah. memor it, it, it's just like um, hypnotic to watch. Yeah, mesmerising. It, it just mesmerises you. Yeah. This is run a little bit better. Okay, they're not in bad shape. The white's in, the yellow's in traditional drop cannon position, so an in off eventually will work for him. So here is a massive opportunity now. Yep. He has got the ball Standard in excellent across position. Looser. So this sh particular shot's called 369, where you score three, then s three another three, the and then a final three here to give yep. you nine points. but at the end of the nine points you can actually start controlling where everything's going to go so and because he's a open player he he enjoys the in-offs um, we should see a few here in succession and uh, his score suddenly start creeping back into the into a reasonable position have you noticed Andy that a lot of the uh Losing hazard players don't chin the queue like uh, a traditional snooker players. They're uh, quite elevated over the queue. There's a few I've noticed, and I find that, that very an age difficult. Thing, but do you think? Uh, maybe, maybe once you like get it's harder to, it. to get down. And I suspect it's 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 partly an age and comfort thing, but also that they can actually sight the ball a little bit better for the in-offs from above. Certainly when you're up above the table looking down, um, certain shots look much easier than when you're down in a snooker player's position. Um, when you're in line now with the, the bed of the shot. table. Now that's a six shot. Uh, so here's followed. another drop cannon, which yep. should get him he's top played of the table. Yeah. He's, he's played for that standard drop cannon position. So this should gather the balls on the top rail. Oh, the dreaded <laughs> smother. <laughs> Just when we thought it was coming right for Paul. <laughs> he must um, be this happens what so frequently with that particular shot. Well, a lot of players will opt to hit the far side of the uh, second target ball. Just to avoid that. That's beautifully played. Little run through. Cushion cannon. Comes all the way up to drop back down on them with a the cannon. Hasn't really come far enough, has he? No, it's a bit, a little a bit awkward, thin. but if he can get this, he, he'll be right in there. Yes, oh, that's, that's lovely. So now yeah. it's just a the question postman's of... postman's knock effect on the, <laughs> on the <laughs> yellow there, that where it kisses back exactly. and leaves you uh, a nice straight red. So all he's trying to do now is pot the red um, and a series of, of um, cannons. He's... He he's hasn't seen it that way. So he'll have to so he's do the 3-6 three, six, six red shot. here. So he scored three. Here's the next three. And now he'll get six. his next three and he'll be able to get back down to a pot and he'll be back top of the table again. See, oh. he doesn't see it that see, way. Now he sees, uh, he sees the loser again. I don't he so got am that, I. He's got the yellow in a very good position. Uh, yeah. I'm just surprised. Well, what's he playing now? This isn't the cannon from here, is it? Really? So he's played oh the drop well cannon there and it's come it's out, worked out perfectly. Fantastically. It's worked out perfectly. But it was a little fortunate he double kissed Look, the yellow. Whether it was fortunate or by design, this may give him the confidence to really start moving yeah. the scoreboard. Are they lined up? can't see from here. Well, he, that, that's just a poor play if it is, because he had a very good opportunity. Yeah. Oh, well it has. He, he had a good opportunity to get up the table. Um, so he's still and just he's on not the standard half ball yeah, line he's again. just not kind of right there at the moment. That's come up short. Now he's forced to go down to the one of the top. But pockets. he should see. That he sees this. Oh, he sees well. this beautifully. He sees this beautifully. As good as anyone I've ever seen. 
unfortunately he picks up a little bit of the jaw and it bounces so out. Here we got the, the short Jenny. The straight pot I think was no, follow, a straight follow pot through here. onto the half ball line. Stop now. Yeah, Just a little good. off the half ball line so he's going to have to hit this with a bit more pace to make the cue ball throw a little wider. So in doing so he goes in and out of balk. Leaves another hopefully long loser, except that it has gone dead to the top round. No, that's a shame. He could have scored a few extra points here. Yeah. Um, and that's time. time. So at the score. 382 to 169. 234. Oh, 234, to 234. So, so that was a nice 65 to, to finish off. So he's not out of the hunt here, but he's going to have to really pick up his game and, and score heavily. Yeah, I uh, think... Um, if I Grant scores first when they come back, uh, I think it'll be shut the gate. It's That's right. Um, it's, a, it's a big deficit um, to get when Grant's... Uh, Grant's really seen the balls, but yep. uh, you know who knows. You have a cup of tea, a few people tell you where you whiskey. went wrong. Who knows <laughs> what might happen on the on the return? Well, I think all he needs is somebody telling him what he did wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I think he does. Okay. Okay, we'll come back to it shortly. Cheers. Okay.